Hambini fans and welcome to another episode of Hambini Reams. In today's episode, I have got the next big thing. Well, it might be a small thing. This, which is T47. Now, if you've had your head buried in sand, this is the latest incarnation of bottom brackets and the progression in terms of manufacturing tolerance. Got a selection of bottom brackets here. On the right hand side, we've got T47, and you'll see there's more than one. That's the first problem. On the left hand side, we have BSA, and BSA has been around for many, many years, and it was effectively the de facto standard when frames were still out of metal because it's threaded. Now, both all of these have been used, so that's why they've got grease and marks on them. This is a standard Shimano Holotech bottom bracket is one of the Hambini ones. So it uses the philosophy of a center sleeve which locates in and then you can screw it in. Now the drive side on this, which is the long side, is a counterclockwise thread and the uh, non-drive side is a clockwise thread. The thread pitch on here is 1.37 by 24 TPI. Now a lot of people annihilate me for saying that's teeth per inch, but teeth per inch or threads per inch. That is, so your 24 mil axle. Now, modern standards have moved us towards this type. This is a titanium bottom bracket and it exists because people have started putting 30 millimeter axles into BSA type bike frames. So the first thing you'll see is that center sleeve is considerably bigger diameter. It's designed to take a 30 millimeter axle um, but the periphery, so the width off the end, is the same. The other thing, and it is the problematic reason with BSA uh, and 30 mil axles is, you can see here where the threads are, the wall thickness is quite thick. The comparative one on a 30 mil is extremely thin. Um, it's quite difficult to manufacture that accurately because the material tends to warp slightly. This is T47 in its purest sense. So T47 has a couple of different derivatives or variants because the bicycle manufacturers have got their hands on them and then tweak things around. The most popular one for frame builders is this one, T47-68. Uh, what that means is the distance between here, so the edge of the threads and the other edge of the threads is 68 millimeters. It is mechanically equivalent to this one because that one is a BSA 68 millimeters. So the gap between the two ends, you can see that, is the 68 millimeters. The difference is it's obviously a lot wider and it's heavier and it also runs on 6806 bearings. So if I take that out, we've got a 6806 there versus the original kind of Shimano Holotech design which had 6805. Consequently, we've also got very thick wall thickness, which that one so you didn't have. So we've got that as a benefit. And the thread on here is 47 millimeters by 1.0. That's not a, a normal standard. All they've done is basically taken a PF30 press fit bottom bracket and then put some one millimeter pitch threads in there. An up and coming standard, and I think it's gaining popularity and it's used by Trek, is this. This is T4786 or 85 and a half or 86 and a half, but it's vaguely the same size. The difference here is the distance between your frame is now 86 and a half millimeters. Now, uh, Trek use 85 and a half millimeters, and they've used that for tooling designs, but to be honest, it's within the tolerance of, uh, well, a Hambini BB, can't really speak for the rest of them. Uh, again, this philosophy of um, interconnecting sleeves is the same on this one. So we've got the drive side, anti-clockwise thread or left-handed thread. Uh, it is 47 millimeters by one millimeter pitch. The non-drive side is a right-handed thread and the things screw together, or not screw together, but it pushes in and you can thread on there. Now, the problem with this, as opposed to this, is a mechanical one in terms of tool engagement. So this is the typical tool that would go into there and you can see that is a very snug fit. 
Yep. That's actually the same tool that fits this. And now most crankset manufacturers are moving to accommodate that size. In terms of the T4786 and a half and a few of the other derivatives, you've got fairly slender teeth engagement. Now, uh, if you've got it in a frame that's fairly trashed, you can end up chewing the, uh, the ends off. Now, a hybrid variant of T47 exists, which is called T4777. Uh, that is effectively you taking the 68 millimeter bottom bracket and the 86 and a half millimeter bottom bracket and then putting the two together. So you take the drive side off this one and the non-drive side off the other one, put it together and then there's your hybrid and it's called a number of different things, but T4777, T4778 and T47 B bright T47, something like that. Right, to give you a bit of background, this is the T47 bottom bracket engineering guide. By Hambini, age five. Remember to look me up on Instacrap and on Patreon if you want more of this sort of technical rubbish. Press fit is being ditched. So all of these technical standards that you maybe have come across, BB30 was the most popular one, prevalent one, BB Right, and a few others, they are all going, dit, going out the window. This slide I've shown earlier in a previous video, but it shows the difference in, um, it's by no means a, a de facto you know, validated data, but it's from a load of bike shops that I supply. So this blue section is um, the number of press fit bikes that went out the door. So you can see it's fairly steady and then it starts to peter off over the, the COVID years. The orange, is the number of threaded bikes. And now that's gone up quite considerably. But if you put that in as a percentage, which is what we've got on the right hand side, then you can see the press fit has gradually gone down, whereas the orange is, is on its way up. It's a bit of background. This was the original standard and it was developed by Chris King, Argonaut Cycles, and a few others. And this is the original drawing and the original incarnation was around 2015. It's taken the best part of seven or eight years for that to go live and wild now. Um, it is technically inferior to interference fit because you have a tolerance stack up. So a threaded connection is never as accurate as a machined interf interface that a bearing goes directly into. So if you have the choice, a well machined interface is better. Uh, the key problem is bike manufacturers have never been able to do that. This is the modern incarnation of T47. So on the left hand side, I've got T4768 and all of the variations of it. So the E, the external, and on the right hand side, we've got T4786, which is often called T47I and T47 internal. And um, the key difference is this dimension here is 68 mil. I've already mentioned this before, or in this case, that distance there is like 86 and a half. You could actually have it as 85 and a half, but it's a story for another day. Um, this, the bearings are in the same place in space on both of them. The difference is you've got the bearings that sit effectively inside the frame boundary on this one. On this one, the bearings sit outside the frame boundary. As I mentioned earlier, this particular design presents some problems in terms of tooling engagement because you don't have much material. So, you know, there's like two mil there versus 10 on the other one. Uh, from a stiffness perspective, T47i, so this one, is likely to be stiffer technical considerations and these revolve mainly around DBCA which is the distance between crank arms and it's uh, that distance there to there I won't dwell on this too much but there is a link to um, my website which explains that in a bit better detail um, you're gonna get into some problems if you are using certain types of crank now these ones up here 
they all have a DBTA of more than 91 millimeters, so you're not really going to have a problem with any of them. But there are a large number of cranks which have um, a DBCA that's less than that, and this may cause a problem in T4786 bottom brackets or T47A, um, and they're mainly 30 millimeters. Um, a number of these. I mean the FSA ones, they were and the road ones, they were often branded or labelled as BB386 uh, cranks. Some of them will be too small to go into that frame. As with any new standard, you do get some potential problems. The biggest one I can foresee, but it hasn't quite materialised yet because the bikes haven't been out for that long, is galvanic corrosion. So you've got um, 7000 series and 6000 series aluminium alloys. Uh, depending on which one you use, you could cause a galvanic problem. So 6000 is a bit softer, um, but it's much more corrosion resistant. Um, 7000 tends to be um, stronger, so it's got a, a higher yield, but its corrosion resistance is quite poor in comparison to 6000. Um, you've got also voids. Now this is a picture of the Legend by Bertoletti bike that we had. Uh, not so long ago and uh, this has got the typical kind of construction which is an aluminium sleeve that's been threaded around here and then glued into the carbon you can see these flat sections here which are locating points by the look of it I mean they're in line with the seat tube which is going off there and um, but if you look carefully up here which I've zoomed in there's loads of voids um, they're almost unavoidable because you haven't got a particular you need a little bit of a gap between the carbon and the aluminium so you invariably will get um, some some areas with voids in there uh, alignment has been a problem and that has been highlighted in some of the, the videos I've shown in the past specifically uh, I think it was a Boardman bike from Vietnam and uh, debonding and this is I mean Lucia Technic uh, he went on about this and I think this could become the next worst thing. Um, these aluminium shells uh, are liable to accumulate water on the inside and you've also got water in the threads itself. You can't really stop it, you can put all the grease in you like, invariably water will just get sucked in there by capillary action. Once it's in there you've got um, the possibility of the galvanic corrosion the uh, aluminium tends to expand and then contract, expand and contract and also there's a bit of thermal growth difference and I suspect these joints around here which are all glued with epoxy may start to be problematic and then the final one is facing and it's very very apparent on this bottom bracket the facing needs to be accurate so you can see um, in order to make this flat you know we've had to remove material in an asymmetric position versus the paint not visually pretty but something we'll have to do who is using what so first of all this may not be accurate and um, so yeah take that with a pinch of salt t47 or derivatives are all of these the ones to which have a few little quirks are Trek, which isn't really a quirk, they've just labelled it differently. Um, Factor and Cervelo use variations of B-Bright and BB-Correct, they're just threaded versions of the two, uh, so the T47A and so just felt. But the others, Look and Colnago, it's only Colnago have only recently done it, I think on the v, VR4S, V4S, whichever one it is, um, but again, you know, I think the general trend there is towards um, is towards threaded. Some notable absentees are these two. So Specialized in Cannondale, they've stuck with BSA. And the thing with BSA is it's been around for so long, um, it's a well-proven standard, but fitting 30 millimeter or dub axles into there, it can prove to be problematic. Um, especially, I mean, the, the large format ones is, is difficult. Have a look at some of my other videos about that. Some notable exceptions on there, uh, which you know aren't even on the threaded category, are Giant and Canyon. Um, they haven't really 
show their hand. I think they will go threaded, but at the moment of making this video, I'm not sure which way they're going to go. The real winner in all of this is SRAM. Now, previously, one of the dominant bottom bracket standards was BB86. It's no longer that. It disadvantaged SRAM quite considerably because the dub axles in there, which are 29 millimeters, were a bit of a faff to get in to fit a 41 millimeter hole. So you have to do all sorts of things with small bearings and stuff like that. Now that they've gone to um, you know, full size 6806 bearings, they are no longer disadvantaged. And I think they are, pro are the likely winners in all of this. Um, as a net, you know, at the opposite end of the spectrum, you've got Shimano, who I wouldn't say they were seething, but they will lose some market share from this change towards T47. The BSA's end of the you know, market, SRAM is not going to be as ideal as Shimano because the Shimano axle is 24 millimeters, but it's not as much of a, a deficit that SRAM has to overcome. So you can fit SRAM dub into BSA. It's not perfect, but it is it's doable to a, a, a competent level. That is it. If you've got any questions or comments, please use the box below. I do read them all. Um, and that's all I have for you today. And as always, keep banging your hairdresser.